Hi everyone and welcome to today to my YouTube channel. Now we're going to do something slightly different. I have been threatening for weeks that with YouTube videos out there getting 3.2 million views for eating. I mean that's what they're doing, eating food. Mm -mm. I've decided I'm going to drink Pepsi while doing maths. Now I'm imagining that's going to throw my viewership through the roof. I I'm going to go viral. I, I can feel it. Uh, you reckon? Hold on a moment. Mm. That is just amazing. The best can of Pepsi I've ever tasted. It is sweet and succulent. It is. I can already hear the subscribers flooding in. Now, if you haven't, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my uh, YouTube channel. That is, if you haven't already been here, welcome to my YouTube channel where it is maths done with a little bit of humor and slightly differently, but well, I offer. Now, if you can do me a favor, and there's a little doohickey over there being highlighted, subscribers make all of the difference. And I would be really, really grateful if you would not only subscribe, you actually sent the link to this video and maybe my channel to all of your friends. I am here doing maths to make things easy for you and for free. That's uh, got to be a good thing. Um, yeah, apparently I'm sort of all right at this. Today we're dealing with degrees and radians, and as I normally say, directly above me, I am highlighting that all-important learning for today. Uh, yes, we're going to look at what a radian is, how we define the size of a radian, uh, how to convert between radians and degrees, and why we use radians. Now, to be honest, there isn't really too much to recap. I've said here, it's a brand new topic. The only thing that probably you guys have heard of already is the word degree. And we'll come to that in a moment. The only thing to recap is that actually since about year seven, all we've done is we've worked in this angle called degrees. You've, you've, you know, I've just given my kids a test now and they've dealt with reflex angles and right angles and obtuse angles and acute angles. And they've had to struggle with that really, really torturous device. You know which I mean? The one that we give you in maths that really causes you all sorts of issues. Yeah, a protractor. I know, go figure, right? The, the whole concept of drawing an angle of 135 degrees was painful. It was like sacrificing people at midnight. Not that we should do that, that is a bad idea. Uh, but the point of it is, we've always measured in angles. We know that this thing here is a right angle and is made up of 90 degrees. We know angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees, which also happens to be two uh, right angles. Well, I suppose the question is, where did this degree come from? In fact, what is a degree? So I, I sort of Googled and I went, where does the degree come from? And uh, Google wasn't particularly clever or, or very helpful. So firstly, there are these things called university degrees. Yes, university degrees. That's not quite what I'm going to measure angles in, uh, but hopefully all of, those used, uh, all of those of you watching will get a university degree. Then there's the three degrees shown behind me. Now, if you have no idea who they are, me either. Not old enough, but I tell you what, show that to your parents or grandparents and I can guarantee they'll go, oh, they were hot, they were, they were really sexy. And I'm like, ah, oh, okay, uh, yeah. Oh, the idea of my grandmother talking about sexy things makes me just a little bit nauseous. Then there is the six degrees of separation. And behind me, you can also see a website from Wikipedia about the six degrees of separation. And funnily enough, that's a little bit of what YouTube, uh, sorry, uh, Facebook sort of deals with. Apparently, you can link any two people in this world through just five or six of their friends. It could be five friends, it could be six friends. I can't quite remember. Maybe it's six degrees of separation. But I know everyone on this planet through six people. Doesn't that blow your mind? <laughs> the fact we know everyone. That means I know Jennifer Lopez. I know Brad Pitt. I know the Queen. Because being British, we all want to know the Queen. I know Donald Trump. Okay, we'll leave that one there. Uh, but the point of it is, there's, there's degrees, but actually no. The one I was looking for was the degrees we angle uh, measure the angles with. And again, I looked it up and I'm like, come on, there must be a way that this is. Now, obviously, if you've seen my previous video on Pythagoras, you'll know that he may well allegedly have stolen his theorem. Bad Pythag. But the point of it is, I thought, well, we must know where the degree is. So I loaded up the website and I'm dimming myself down a little bit. And if you read that first paragraph, what does it say? It says, yep, we don't know. No one really knows. Well, that's a little bit of a letdown. I'm a little bit disappointed that no one knows. You think someone would have written it down? Send an email, maybe? No. Nah. So, bringing me back up to full strength. Uh, ooh, power. Ooh. All right, so we're going to deal with these other ways to measure uh, angles, and they're called radians, and they are spelled R-A-D-I-A-N-S. And you're going to say, well, well, what's a radian? Well, chill, just give me a second. I'm coming to it. All right, okay. 
Now, radians are really, really important. And as I say here, for pretty much the rest of the course, you will be expected to use radians. Your calculator has a radians function. Uh, and depending on which calculator it has will depend on where it is. I know for the Casio class pad, it's a little uh, RAD, GED, uh, and GRA on the bottom of your calculator, which you tap. So my advice now, make sure your calculator is in radians. If in an exam they are asking you to do with degrees, it's a bit of a trick, okay? Uh, it's there deliberately to trick you. So just look for degrees, but most of the times it's radians. And you're still gonna go, what is this radian stuff? Well, okay, consider the following shape. Here is a circle. Is it perfect freehand? No. Am I clinically insane? No, thankfully not. Now this circle is special in the sense of it has a radius of just one unit, okay? So, because it has a radius of one unit, we call it the unit circle. And I sort of mentioned it a little bit in my last video, right? The unit circle is critically important now for all of the work we are about to do. So please remember it. A radian is such that we have a part of the circle where the length of this part here is exactly equal to that. So what I'm trying to say is, if I was to have a radius of one unit, then my part of my circumference, that bit around the edge, otherwise known as my arc length, if you've done sort of circles before, then my arc length is also one unit. And when those two are true, when I have a radius of one and an arc length of one, this here is the equivalent of one radian. Okay, so that's quite important. Visually, would you be able to draw that? It's actually quite hard, but... As I said here, I am keep dealing with arc length. And if you've dealt with circles before, arc length is actually just a section or a part of my circumference. Circumference? Now, wouldn't it be awesome if I knew what the circumference of a circle was? Oh, hold on a moment, I do! Now, we know the circumference of a circle is 2 times pi times radius. And if we're dealing with a unit circle, that means my circumference is 2 times pi times 1. So for a unit circle, my circumference is 2 pi long. Well, how am I now going to use that information to find out how many radians there are in a circle? Well, as I sort of say here, we are looking that one radian is equal to one unit of length. Well, we know there are 2 pi units of length, and so, surprisingly, there are 2 pi radians, and that is freaking awesome. And actually, it's one of the most important things. There are two pi radians in a circle. Hopefully that sort of made sense to you. Now, why is that important? Because we know that 360 degrees now is exactly the same as two pi radians. Why is this gonna be important to me? Well, if you look a little bit below, you'll see about converting between degrees and radians. I'll talk about that again in a moment. The last thing for me is that the important thing here is the symbol for a radian is that little c. So 2 pi with a little c. Now I have to say, over here in Australia, I very rarely see it written with a little c. It's fairly obvious from the questions that we deal with in terms of trig functions and differentiation and all sorts of different things that the questions is, is in terms of radian. So it's fairly redundant to have to write the c. The only advice I can give you is if you're dealing with questions that's dealing with both degrees and radians, make sure you use that little c and try not to make it, see I'm really bad at doing this, try not to make it look sort of like an ill-formed degree. Now I'm going to repeat over and over again through the video how important radians are, so please excuse me if you can get them into your head, life is good. But uh, yeah, let's move on to the next section. So how do we convert between degrees and radians? Well, I've actually already just shown that to you. We know that 360 degrees is 2 pi radians, and that's the only thing I ever remember. Seriously, it's the only thing I ever remember. Because from that, I now know that 180 degrees is pi radians. How? because I've literally divided both of those by two. So now I'm gonna use ratios. I'm just literally gonna use dividing to help me get to all the next answers. So I now know that 90 degrees is pi on two radians. I've divided 180 by two, so I divide pi by two. What else have I got? 45 degrees is pi on four radians. Now interestingly, those, uh, what is that? One, two, three, four, you must commit to memory. If you can just become conversant in these things, then actually you're gonna be able to find mass much, 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 much more snappy. Uh, let's find some other common angles that we need. So 360 degrees again is two pi. Well, one of the other ones we use a lot is 60 degrees. 
Well, how have I got from 360 to 60? I've divided by six. So that becomes two pi on six, which otherwise can be written as pi on three. So 60 degrees being pi on three, also really, really important. Important, important. Uh, I'm pop away to sailor man. Anyway, no, hold do thing. And 30 degrees then would be, well, pi on three. So if I've divided that by two, I'd have to divide that by two. Now, a lot of people go, how, how do I do that? Well, pi on three divided by two. Well, if you've watched some of my previous videos and my manic way that I do these, then I'm going to Kentucky freaking that's fried. What? Kentucky chicken that's fried. And you can go, what on earth are you talking about? Kentucky chicken that's fried. Well, the Kentucky fried chicken's already been taken, so I've got to open my own restaurant, which is Kentucky chicken that's fried. So, Kentucky chicken that's fried, which maybe you may have been taught by some random other teacher as keep, change, flip. So, turn that into a fraction. I get pi on three times one on two, which gives me pi on six. So 30 degrees is pi on six. And they actually pretty much are all of the ones that you need to remember. So, which are they? So 180 degrees is equal to pi. 90 degrees is equal to pi on two. 45 degrees is pi on four. What did I say, 60 degrees? is pi on three, and 30 degrees is pi on six. Now using those, I can pretty much find anything else I need. Now you're gonna say, well, where's 360 degrees? Mm, it's rare that we use 360 Cs, but 360 degrees. But now using these, I can pretty much convert anything to anything. And you're gonna say, what do you mean? Well, here's some examples. He says, writing the word examples strangely. So for example, if I wanted to write 150 degrees in radians, how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to use this one here. Why? Because I know that 30 degrees is pi on six. It's easy to go from 30 degrees to 150 degrees simply by times in by five. Yes? Okay, good. As long as you know that, that's fine. So if I multiply that side by five, I have to multiply that side by five and I get five pi on six. So 150 degrees is five pi on six. What about 135 degrees? Ooh, 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 135 degrees. Well, that's the same as 90 degrees and 45 degrees, which is equal to pi on two plus pi on four. All right, so pi on two plus pi on four, that's the same as two pi on four plus pi on four, which just so happens to give me three pi on four. Uh, okay, I wanna turn radians into degrees. How do we do that? Right, well, let's say I had uh, seven pi on uh, five. Actually, doing it this way around is a lot, lot easier. So whenever I see pi, I know that pi radians is 180 degrees, and that's literally all I'm gonna do. Seven times 180 divided by five. Well, I know fives go into 180 uh, three and six times, 36 times. So seven times 36, 36 times seven is 36, 42, seven, 14, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, that would be, 252 degrees. Uh, oh, I don't know, what else can I do? There are other common ones we use. Um, what about three pi on two? Well, same thing, three times 180 divided by two. Well, two's going to 180 90 times, and three times 90 just happens to be 270 degrees. Now, going back to my unit circle, um, I just wanna make something clear, that these are split into quarters. All right, and that's gonna be really important in my next video. But actually guys, I think that's pretty much it. So just to recap again, what do we know about the radian? The radian is the size of the angle where a unit circle, which has a radius of one unit, gives me a arc length, an edge length of one unit. Now lots of people say, why do we use radians? Well, in many cases, the reason we use it is because it's actually more convenient. And again, there's websites you can go to Google it, Wikipedia, it, it's, it's out there and there is many, many long, long explanations as to why. But it actually makes some of our calculations a lot, lot easier. So one of the things that I happen to know is that S is equal to R theta. Now you're gonna say, what on earth is this S equals R theta? Well, S actually is the arc length of a circle and R is the radius. 
theta here is equal to the size of the angle. Now, when theta is in terms of radians, that formula makes life really, really easy. When theta isn't in terms of radians, then actually this formula yeah, is not actually that formula. It's quite disgusting. So we tend to be able to work out things like arc lengths, radiuses, thetas, and all sorts of stuff when we have radians. When we do trig functions and differentiation, which is stuff way, way, way beyond this methods one and two course, uh, we use radians because it really does make life a lot, lot easier when we differentiate. I'll sort of come back to that when I do some videos for methods three and four, but there are very specific reasons, which is why we use it all the time now. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, degrees and radians is now done. The video length, about 15 minutes. As is usual, it is so, so good to have you with me. And I, look, again, the fact that you're watching is great. Um, I said at the beginning, and I'll say it again now, subscribers make all of the difference. I sit in here on my own, talking to myself, hoping that more than seven people in Hull, hey Hull, are watching these videos. Um, so if you can, just send the link around, share it with your friends, get them to subscribe, greatly appreciated. Oh, you will? Good, subscribe by clicking that little button there. If you're not, maybe next time. Oh, you want to watch another video? There you go. It's over there for you, loading up. Uh, I'm done for the day. It's always a pleasure. This is Mouse Guru, signing off.